Pedro. All right. Welcome to Wednesday night before Christmas. So glad to have you with us. And I uh, hope you're uh, having a blessed week. Praise the Lord. Um, this is our last service before New Year's Day. So um, Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Bueno Natale. Bueno Natale. Natale. And uh, Feliz Navidad. Hallelujah. So we got it in French. Uh, Joya Noel. Okay, there we go. French. Um, bueno, 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 let's see, bu, bon Natale, okay, Italiano, and then Feliz Navidad Espanol, and, um, you know, that's about all I got there. Uh, in Czech? You got it in Czech? Uh, here's Tim. Welcome, buddy. <laughs> He's excited. <laughs> He's attacking the door. All right. Um, so we pray everyone has an awesome and wonderful Christmas. And uh, you be blessed during this, this season. And um, grateful for God and grateful for you and grateful for the uh, closing out of this year. Hallelujah. Um, tonight, open your Bibles, if you will, to the ninth chapter of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9, hallelujah, we'll be reading from the first through the seventh verses, verse 1 through verse 7, okay, uh, nevertheless the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation. When at the first he lightly afflicted, he, he, he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtal, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nations and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in the harvest. And as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, and unto, uh, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be as upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. And upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. Glory to God. Aren't you glad it's even forever? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall or will perform this. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, I, I like that phrase there. You know, of the increase of government and peace, there shall be no end. Amen. That um, the, uh, the reign of, on David's throne over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. Hallelujah. Now, the justice that God's talking about is rightness, uprightness. Um, God will vindicate the, the oppressed. Amen? Amen. Amen? He won't burn down cities to do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen? He, he, won't, he won't do crazy stuff to do it. But the judgment of God, the, the uh, justice of God will be known in the earth. Amen. Praise God. But it will be upon the righteous. Those who come into right relationship with him. Can you say amen? amen? And then Isaiah 7, 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means, or interpreted out of Hebrew, uh, God with us. Amen. Aren't you glad God's with us? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Uh, you know, a child is born, but a son was given. I, you know, this scripture was so clear. The child was born, but the son was given. Hallelujah. The virgin birth. Supernatural. You know, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son. Amen. Isaiah chapter 9. Uh, you know, we, we have it clear that the, the, the child is it's a virgin birth. Hallelujah. And then the Lord's going to give a vir verse 7. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. Hallelujah. And the looking into Luke chapter 1. In verse 26, in the sixth month of the angel, the, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth <clears throat> to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, and the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. <clears throat> and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord, of God, Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there is no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And like one guy said, knowing in the biblical sense. Okay? Not just talking about having, a, having met someone, talking about relations. She has not known a man. Hallelujah. And the angel answered her and said, the, uh, said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, which was called barren. And here's what the angel says. For with God, nothing shall be in possible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Now, when you break down verse 37 in the Greek and, and study that out, it really literally says this, no word from God is void of the power necessary to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. How? Because no word of God is void of the power necessary to bring it to pass. The word was, you will conceive and bring forth the son. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Amen. And the, at the end of his government, there shall be no end. Hallelujah. And she, you know, she was asking, how shall it be? He told her that the Holy Ghost is going to come on thee and overshadow thee. And that be, therefore that thing born of thee shall be uh, called the Son of God. And then he went on and said this, no word from God has voided the power necessary to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Thank God for the word from the Lord. Amen. 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 Now, she took it. Her cousin Elizabeth didn't. Or her, her cousin Elizabeth's husband, um, Zachariah, didn't. Remember that? God had to shut his mouth. Yeah, he had to zip, he had to zip his lip yeah. okay. because there's power in words. There's power in words. Glory to God. Amen. And so, um, you know, he said that there was a word from God. It was not void of the power necessary to bring it to pass, meaning that if you'll take that word, it'll, it'll do exactly what it said. Yeah. Amen. So she received in herself and conceived and then later bore, bore, um, bore forth uh, Jesus, praise God. Now, remember, the first person to recognize who Jesus was in her womb, amen, when she went and met her cousin Elizabeth, the child within her jumped for joy. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. John, John the Baptist already recognized who was over in the other womb, who was in, who was in the oven next door. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> amen. Oh, there he is. He's right over there. Praise God. Amen. You know, so, so there you go, abortion. Let's take that one. You know, the John the Baptist is jumping up now because he knows who's over in the next room. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And uh, then in verse chapter 2, we get what we always like. People always like to read Luke chapter 2 at Christmas. And it's accurate. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it gives us the, the best picture. Hallelujah. 
Luke, Luke liked to write. He wrote, um, did you know in, 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 in volume, he wrote more of the New Testament than any other writer? Not in number of letters, but in volume. Uh, between, between the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts, he wrote more than Paul. Hallelujah. But that's volume, okay? Because he's accounting, okay? Paul's letters were doctrinal in, um, um, in essence and in, in, in meaning. And so, but Luke wrote more. Glory to God. Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. I'm going to tell you, people, they've been taxing ever since, since Jesus' days. <laughs> tax and spend liberals. They just love to tax and spend money. Okay? And the Romans were taxing all the time so they could build their fancy roads and they could have their, you know, lifestyles. Um, we'll just leave that one alone. And this taxi was first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria. And all that went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. You had to go home. Not only, but not only did they, you have to go somewhere and get taxed, you had to travel. You had to pay your money and travel to go to another city where you were born. You could be, you know, three days journey, and you had to spend your money to go pay the Romans some money. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure taxation is a good thing. I really don't, you know, limited at the best. Anyway, we're, just, we're not going to get on into that. Because if I get down that road, we, we, we'll never get back. <laughs> and Joseph went up also from Galilee, out of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought first her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end, well, you know, I mean, they, they were full. Hey, why? Everybody that come to town to what? Get taxed. So all the the, um, you know, the limited housing for travelers was taken up. And so the only place he had was, apparently, was, was a manger out back, a, a, a stall. You know, a, a cattle stall or, you know, livestock stall would, you know, probably uh, hay or straw in there, you know. Whatever, uh, and that's the only place they had they could get shelter, and she delivered her baby there. And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Well, they, you know, angels start appearing in the sky. I mean, unless you're born again and understand God, it could shake you up a little bit, especially when they start talking to you. Okay? I mean, you know, everybody starts going to Area 57. Area 57. Is it 57 or 50? Is it, it's 57, right? Are you UFO people? 50, 51. Area 51. Thank you. I'm thinking of Heinz. <laughs> Heinz, yeah. Mix that with some, real, with some butter and stir it up. You got a steak sauce. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. And, and the angel said, and then, fear not. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. <clears throat> and suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Or literally, like we said Sunday, the Greek says, God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace towards men of goodwill. That's how it's structured in the Greek. Okay? So, God, if, if, listen, if you're evil and living in evil and doing evil, there's no peace for you until you get born again and repent. Okay? So God says, "Peace on earth and good will, good will toward, I mean, um, and toward men of good will. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace towards men of good will." And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into the heaven, the shepherds said to one another, "Let one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come, which the Lord hath made known unto us." Hallelujah. 
Praise God. We'll stop right there. Now, I'll, I hope you'll notice there, there ain't no wise men there. Now, we all have the nativity scenes at home, and we all have the wise men. We three men of Orient are, you know, traveling from a country afar. Da, 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 da. Now, it was two years later they showed up. He was in a house. Herod, I mean, uh, Herod went and had all the children killed two years and under, according to the time that he diligently inquired of the wise men. Mary and Joseph and Jesus had fled to Egypt because the Lord had warned them. <clears throat> and out of Ramah came a crying and a well because of what had happened. Okay? So the, the Magi really weren't there. And there weren't three. Okay, when they showed up. We get the three from the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. And the three gifts. But it won't three guys. It won't three Eastern Oriental uh, guys showing up and travel for all this travel from following the, Beth the Bethlehem star, the star, you know, the, Beth the star of Bethlehem, to get there for, you know, the night that Jesus was born with the shepherds. It was about two years later. The three come from gold, frankincense, and more. Uh, 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 gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And it is believed that the Magi traveled in uh, caravans of about 60. That messed up your nativity scene. Yeah. Got to have 60 of them that were camels. That's a, lot, that's a lot of people, okay? We don't, we don't know how many shepherds were out there. I mean, most, most manger scenes have one or two, you know? Um, I mean, if we really got, kind of went with more realistic, there wouldn't be enough room for everybody's Nativity scenes. I do not call it a nativity. That became real popular a few years ago. You know, it was a nativity. Go back up north. I'm, I'm messing with you northerners. You Yanks. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, I, w I went, I ordered a dessert at the Grandover uh, yesterday, day before. When, day, whenever I eat there, it was yesterday. We went, yep, nope, yep, nope. Day before Monday, that's right. Janice and Jerry know they saw it on Facebook. <laughs> Hallelujah. The guy said, we have, a, we have a pecan cobbler or pecan. I said, buddy, you in the south, it's pecan. He said, well, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, but he had to say pecan for those who, who aren't from here. Cap, my son-in-law, tries to pull that stunt. If you want some, it's pecan, buddy. <laughs> See that pie right there? Pronounce it correct or you get none. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. So uh, they, they come. The angels have appeared. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and um, But you notice it, it says here, um, glory to God in the highest and on the earth, uh, goodwill toward men of peace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's one thing that's common going on here, and that's joy. The announcement of the birth of Christ brought joy. Hallelujah. The Christ, the Messiah, hallelujah, had come into the earth. The earth had been groaning for centuries and ages to come um, for this event, hallelujah, for, for, the, for the Messiah, for the King to come. Now, there's a lot more that's going to take place. There's another 33 years after this event. Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. Highly likely, since the shepherds were in the fields, it was around uh, late, uh, late winter, early spring, really moving into the first of spring, okay, just because of, of, of the events that were going on, okay? So m more likely he was born in the spring in the earth. Now, we don't have the exact date. You know, we don't have, we didn't have computer databases back then that kept that good of a record. Okay? He was born. We know that. We know of, of, of the general time frame. Okay? From, from historians and so forth. But we, we don't know the precise exact date. So, whether you celebrate it today or on the 6th of January or, you know, like you should every day of the year. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus was born. And he came into the earth. And he came into the earth as a babe, praise God. Wow, he had to take on flesh. Amen. And then the Bible says, you know, that he grew in wisdom and stature and favor with God and 
man. Hallelujah. And uh, no, at 12 years old, he was not making clay pigeons and causing them to live and fly off. He wasn't being translocated all over the world at 12 years old, working miracles. Uh, the, the, church, the Mormon church says he did all this stuff. Okay? No. Remember, how do you know he didn't do any miracles before then? Because when he turned the water in the wine, the Bible says this is the first miracle when he came into Judea, uh, came into Georgia, or uh, out of Cana of Galilee. The first miracle. Not the second, not the third, not the 45th, not the 101st. That's the airborne. How, hey, the first. All right? The first miracle was turning the water into wine. Now, again, grape juice and, and wine were the same word in the Greek. wasn't a different word. Okay? And we've recently uh, heard from a, um, a, a traveling minister who was talking with a winemaker in Europe, and they were sharing how that the very best wine is the moment before it ferments. Right before it ferments was the best tasting. Okay? And you say, well, how do you know he didn't make alcoholic? How can God prohibit drunkenness? Wait till million men have well drunk and then give them more alcoholic beverage and make them drunker. It doesn't line up with who God is. So I don't believe it was alcoholic. Okay? There's not a, there's not a differentiating term in the, in the Greek between fermented and non-fermented grape juice. Okay? Because now all Christians run around wanting to drink wine and say, I'm so okay to drink wine. It's all right to drink wine. It's all right to drink wine. I'll tell you what, you know, you can destroy your testimony with, with somebody with that. Go witness to an alcoholic or recovered alcoholic while you drink your Chardonnay and tell them it's okay. They're liberated and, and they go back into that and it destroys their life. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. Now, I won't hear you explain that one to Jesus. Yep. <clears throat> growing, up, growing up a classical Pentecostal, we don't drink. There's no profitability in it. The only thing it can do is hurt. It doesn't enhance your life. Okay? It really doesn't. Jesus will enhance your life. Well, what if I need some relaxation? Pray in tongues. Amen. That'll get you relaxed. I tell you what, you can pray in tongues till you go to sleep. Sometimes just knock you right out. <laughs> you be preeping before the Lord. We're slaying in, in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, Jesus came to earth. Why? John 3, 8 says, the last half of that verse, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And then 1 Peter 1, 8 says this, Whom he, having not seen, ye love. And whom though now ye see him yet not believing, though you see him not yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. The earth had groaned for millennia in, in, in uh, agony since the fall of man. When Adam committed high treason in the Garden of Eden, the earth was... was Put into chaos. They were going to live by the sweat of their brow. They were cursed with a curse. Spiritual death, poverty, and sickness came into the earth, not known before the fall of man. And the earth was out of order. We started here, you know, you started having murder. You started having wars. You started having uh, rumors of war. You started having earthquakes. And you started having uh, floods. And you started having, uh, you know, bad, not acts of God, big letter God. Acts of little g, God. Amen? It's not the, it's in whom the God of this world, you know? But the earth was groaning and travailing in, in, in anticipation because creation wants to be what God designed it to be. In, in, just like man wants to be like God, the inner part of man is so hungry to be like God, Satan keeps offering alternatives and keeps offering ways not to walk with God. Satan keeps trying to, you know, offer you know, alcohol, offer drugs, offer, offer perversion, offer activities, offer golf on Sunday mornings. 
Jerry. <laughs> Jerry does not miss church to play golf. If he did, I'd be there on the golf course chasing him down. Ye generation of vipers and snails. Now, Jerry likes to play golf. He will probably not ever play with me. Were you there the day me and Alan were playing and I almost hit him? I uh, know, at Jamestown. At Jamestown where the ball bounced inside the cart. That was, we had the picnic at the park. And then we went and played golf. And I was in the, uh, I teed off. Had Alan in the golf cart behind, he was behind me. Okay. No, no, I was in the rough. That's what I was. I was in the rough. I got in the rough. And I took out my driver. I'm, I play golf crazy. And I laid down into that bad boy. I mean, I drilled it. Hit a tree. Came flying back into the cart. And you could hear it going, bing, 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 bing. And him diving out of the cart to the ground. So, so something I'll never forget. It was hilarious. I mean, you think the safest place is behind. Not with me. You never know what's going to happen. Another golf story. I was, I was playing down in my hometown of Aden on the Aden Golf and Country Club course. Uh, our family was members, so we get we go play anytime we wanted to. And a lot of times during the summer, we went every day. Okay, we just went all the time. And then we had a par three, and I used one wood. I told you I played golf crazy. Well, we had 80 foot, you know, yellow pines back there behind that hole. Because on the other side was the fairway for, um, um, this was, this was uh, hole four, four or five on the other side was like three, the fairway of three. And so they had, you know, some wooded area with big, tall yellow pines. I drilled it. You see it flying. You go, it's going to that fairway on the other side of the trees. You hear it hit something. Hits a tree. And then you see the ball come flying back, hits the green, and wall rolls up that close to the hole. I almost had a hole in one. <laughs> What'd you use? A one wood? On a par three? <laughs> I did some stuff playing golf you wouldn't believe. Tee off on hole one and put it on the nine green. Because just, you know. Baseball, baseball muscle memory was roll your wrist, you know. <laughs> I rolled my, I rolled my wet, my wedge or whatever, and it just rolled, hit it, and it bounced right over and rolled up on the green on nine because that was right beside the tee for hole one. And a few other things we did crazy. All right, hallelujah. How did I get off? Oh, golf. How did I get off on golf, Jerry? How did I get off on golf? It was sin <laughs> to play on Sunday morning instead of being in church. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. Huh? Yeah, let's give it all. I mean, what, what else did we leave out? Football. You yeah, missed the church on Sunday morning because you had to stay home and watch the, the, your team play in England. On, on that. Okay. No, I noticed nobody stopped and stayed home and watched the World Cup. Now, my kids were upset that they put the World Cup on Sunday morning because they wanted to watch it. You know, um, so they, they didn't get to stay home and watch it on TV. Oh, well, France lost anyway, so in a shootout. So anyway, but I'm trying to remember how I got way over there on all that anyway. Joy. Oh, offering something to keep you, at, to what, appease, to appease the heart. See, because the heart of man longs for reconnection to God. It just doesn't know what it is. It knows it's empty. It knows something is missing. It knows there's more. It just doesn't know what. Because in most cases, people don't even realize they are spirit. Because everything about them <coughs> has taught them to gain knowledge from their natural senses. What they see, what they hear, what they taste, what they touch, and what they smell. And their whole life they have built 
their perception of reality based on their senses. And so the flesh rules. Yet something is always missing. So they indulge deeper and deeper. Some people, it's their job. They, they live to work. You know, they're, 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 they're what we call type A personalities. They can't function without working, you know, 28 hours a day. Or as the Beatles said, eight days a week. Okay? You know, it's this constant. Why? Because somewhere they're looking for the satisfaction. And see, in America, a lot of that is we, we think satisfaction is found in success. We're satisfied if we achieve a certain level of success. There's no contentment with life. Okay, we came out with iPhones. Okay, cool. You can send a message. I mean, I've got my Dick Tracy watch on. I can call you with this. I can text you with this. I can watch certain videos on this. Now, I remember as a kid, we thought that was like science fiction, crazy, far out a concept. Here it is. Right here. But have you noticed that no matter what they do with your cell phone, they'll come out with one better, and then what's happened? What you got to do? You got to upgrade. Now, they, they start shutting stuff down on you. They really do. And making it so it won't work right, so you go out and upgrade. Because when I bought this, this thing worked perfectly fine. Fast as lightning. I mean, two years later, it starts slowing down. The battery won't keep a charge. They don't write updates for it. So you can't get an update to allow it to do this new stuff because they're, not, they're no longer supporting it. Why? To force you into the next phone. And it's going to have a better camera. You know, the new one has three lenses. If I want really good pictures, I will take my digital uh, single lens reflex, okay, Canon, with my, with my zoom lens, and I will go put it on a tripod, and I will take, and I, I'll set, and I take it off of auto and put it on manual, and I'll set my f-stop and aperture and ratings and uh, all this kind of stuff, and I'll take pictures at 24, I think 26, 24, 26 megapixels on my camera. This cannot take the same quality. I don't care. Because the area that the light comes on determines the, the depth of perception and quality. Now, maybe on a picture of this size, you can't tell the difference. Blow it up into a poster, and you can tell a difference. Okay? So we, we, our reality is the world around us that we've gained knowledge of with our senses. And people walk around with this gnawing something. Well, they indulge more in the flesh. They think if they have better success, they'll be happy. There are people who marry who think if they have a different wife, they'll be happy. Or a different husband, they'll be happy. People think that, you know, um, you know drinking is going to make them happy. Doing drugs will make them happy. Achieving a certain status in, 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 you know, in, in society will make you happy. All right? Possessing enough stuff will make you happy. I'm about to downsize, folks. As soon as I can get my house to a certain position, I'm getting a smaller one. I, ain't going, I don't want a bigger one. I want a smaller one. You know, I got way too many square feet for two people. What about if the kids come home? They all live here. They got their own house. And if they come, if I get small, too small and they go up in town, I'll rent them a hotel room. Then come over and visit. Or I'll put an air mattress out in the middle of the floor, one of the two. And they'll sleep on it, not me. Okay? I don't need the square footage in case they come home. I just don't. But. You know, if I have this kind of car, and you know, honestly, can I be real blunt? I really don't think I want a Lamborghini. 
Because I'd hate to put it on the road. Because I can guarantee if somebody hits me, their insurance ain't going to cover the difference. Because most insurance companies max out at about 25 grand on liability. Unless you're carrying a special rider on your car. So if you hit a $200,000 car and your, company, your, car, your insurance pays out 25 grand, you're 175 in the hole. Or the person who has Lamborghini better have some type of gap insurance that covers the difference. Okay? And let's face it. I mean, just how nice can a car be? Let's get a Rolls Royce. Handmade. Everything. Everything. Hand sewn. Hand uh, this. Hand that. 600000 to a million dollars. Let's go ahead. For an automobile. Well, there's nothing wrong with having great possessions. If Having those possessions becomes the satisfaction of your heart. Yes, there is. Because I can guarantee you this much. It won't matter if you, you know, if you get the newest, latest, greatest, as soon as they come out with a different one, you're going to trade yours and go get the other one because it's got more stuff on it. Now, it took them forever to get me off a of flip phone. I can make phone calls. I can text messages. What else do I need? Oh, you need to be addicted. <laughs> so how many know that, that smartphones are nothing but a walking addiction? You got to check it 24-7, see who texted you, who posted something on Facebook. Come on now. You heard a ding. Who was that? There, you know, people now drive addicted. <laughs> You see them at night, the, the face is lit up. They're looking down at their cell phone, and they're trying to drive into your lane. You know they're on their phone looking at something. The, the heart of man is empty. And that's why joy surrounded Jesus. Because the answer to the empty heart had come into the earth. The answer to the, the miserable soul had come into the earth. The one, the one thing that you can't get too much of is God. Amen. Hallelujah. And the more of him you have, the more of him you want. And the more you know him, the more you want to know him. Right. Hallelujah. You know, and, and God said this, I, I, I give you the power to get wealth and add no sorrow therewith. See, God fills Without sorrow. You know, there is worldly sorrow. And there is sorrow that comes with wealth. You know, talk about people who, who would be rich, that they pierce themselves through with many sorrows. What, what do you mean would be rich? They strive for one thing, to be rich. And they'll pierce themselves through with many sorrows because they're pursuing riches which cannot satisfy the soul. Sex cannot satisfy the soul. Alcohol cannot satisfy the soul. Drugs cannot satisfy the soul. Possessions cannot satisfy the soul. Store up treasures in heaven where neither moth, the rust, the inner end, and corrupt. And Jesus came. And, the, and, and he is, you know, we worship him and we honor him and we love him. And because what? And it becomes joy unspeakable and full of glory. Because the emptiness of the heart is filled with him. And only he can fill it. I do not care how much you drink, how much you shoot up, how many things you possess, how perverse you come, how much you cater to your flesh. I mean, listen, Buddha. How many know there was a skinny Buddha before there was a fat Buddha? There really was. Buddha thought the way to enlightenment was to starve himself. He found out that didn't work, so he, he changed it and decided that it was by eating and got fat. So starving or getting fat didn't fix him either way. He was still empty. And we gorge ourselves in the natural of possessions and things and activities to appease the emptiness of the heart. That, but when God fills it, hallelujah, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. It is the answer to life. 
It is the satisfaction that only he can give. Hallelujah. And men and women need to know that. And our job as, as Christians is to be so full of him and so full of this joy that we carry it forth and share it with others, praise God. Why is Christmas the highest time of suicide when it should be the most joyous time in the, wor in the world? Because people are empty. And they want to, they want to, you know, they can't just say Merry Christmas anymore. It's got to be Happy Holidays, Seasons Greetings, Happy Hanukkah, you know, um, uh, Happy Kwanzaa, uh, Happy EID. That's the Muslim holiday. You know, Kwanzaa, made up by a college professor in California in the 60s. Made it up. A, a harvest. He just made it up. We, the rest, history shows he made the thing up. And now we got everybody running around, happy Kwanzaa. Do you feel better now as a, you know, a person of color that you've got a holiday? You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Christmas is not a white man's holiday. It is the celebration of the King of kings and Lord of lords. The entrance into the earth of the great mighty Savior. It isn't happy Hanukkah for the Jews. They, Hanukkah had, uh, celebrates a battle, a, de a defeat in a battle. It is not, I don't even know that it's religious as far as that is concerned. Okay? We, we get, what is all this? It comes from the devil. You can't turn on television now. We don't have Christmas trees. We have holiday trees. We don't have Christmas break at the school system. We have winter. We don't even get holiday break. We get winter break. Yes, it has to be winter break. Because you can't say, gee. Now, they can, the Muslims can go over in a classroom and pray during the day. Because you're, you're supposed to pray at a certain time in the day. And they get to go to, right, out of class, take out of class and go pray. But you can't talk about Jesus. Why? Because there's the real answer. I said, there's the real answer. You, you have, when's the last time you went to a movie or turned on the television with a movie and heard somebody go, oh, Muhammad. Well, I'll be Buddha. Krishna. You ever hear that? Have you ever heard it? Until right then, Never. Why? Because they're false religions. They're false liars. There'll be many who come, but there's only one who brought eternal life. He's not one of many. He is the one. I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, Jesus said. Okay? Well, I believe that there's many avenues. Well, then you just call Jesus a liar. Because he said, I am the only way. I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And that's why there's rejoicing in the earth. Because creation knew. Creation recognized the creator walking on the earth. And there was great joy. And then as he began to preach and to share the truth, there was great joy. Everything he did brought joy to the hurting. Everything he did brought joy to the oppressed. Everything he brought, did brought joy to the uh, possessed and depressed and suppressed and every kind of pressed. Okay? And I think I got I probably got out of the light. You know, doesn't look as good on the cameras when I step back there. But, oh, well, it's okay. Amen. So this is the season of joy for us. And we need to be so full of joy. And we need, you know, I, I'm, I'm, th I'm now, people say, you know, um, happy holidays or Merry Christmas. What if they don't believe like that? Merry Christmas. I can introduce you to him and you can start saying it. Amen. We're not, we're not going to, I'm not going to hide behind some protocol that I don't want to offend somebody. Hello. That they might be upset because they don't, if they need to believe. I like what Franklin Graham just said. 
You know, Amy, you know, came out and she's doing a, a, a gay lesbian wedding for her niece on her ranch, her Vince Gill. And she's come out in the past few years and basically supported LBGTQ causes, even had on a sweater with the, with the you know, the rainbow on it. And um, she said that two things for sure, Jesus made it, made it uh, that we love God and love each other. With the inference that it's okay, you know, as long as you love the person to do whatever. Franklin Graham said, you know what, if you love God, if you love God, if you love Jesus, he, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And then he went on and said this. He said, my love for people, you know, and I, I'm going to paraphrase this a little bit, but demands that I tell them the truth because I'm more concerned about their eternal soul than I am their momentary happiness or pseudo happiness here on the planet. I'm more concerned with where they're going for eternity than I am whether or not they get to live with a person of their same sex on here with a marriage license that says they're married. Got to give it to the Baptist. <laughs> they don't pull punches, and I like it, okay? Amen. You know, uh, and it's so true. You know, uh, you know she, she left her husband. And, and, and got hooked up with Vince Gill, who was married. They were both married, they, and they were both in adultery. And, and then ABC runs this long special about how the Christian community rejected her and pushed her away and stuff. Well, wait a second now. Now, number one, you're rich because of the Christian community buying your albums. Two, we reject your narrative that it was a love story. David and Bathsheba, Hollywood made it a love story. It wasn't a love story. It was a love story. How do you know? Because there was a time of the year that the kings went out to battle and David stayed behind and went up on the mountain rooftop and looked over and saw Bathsheba bathing. David wasn't supposed to be there. And called his people, said, go get her, brought her over and had sex with her. Hello. It wasn't a love story. It was a love story. He saw that woman up there butt naked. And he said, I got to have that. I'm just going to be, I mean, you know, let's, let's, let's take all the King Jimmy off of it. And let's put it for what it really is. He stayed behind, and I, I, I'm going to bet you his flesh had heard that women were going up on the roof taking baths because all the men were gone. Where were they? They were out there fighting. Well, nobody's supposed to be behind. Time of the year, the kings went out to battle. David stayed behind in Jerusalem. Now I got a whole sermon on decisions. Called decisions, decisions, decisions. David's decision to stay behind caused all kinds of trouble. Yeah. Cost a man his life. Cost him the firstborn of his adulterous relationship. Hello. Almost cost him his life. What do you mean? Remember a prophet named Nathan? Showed up one day and told King David. There was a man in the city who had many, uh, who had many lambs. But he had a guest come into town, and he went over to the guy who only had one little ewe lamb, <clears throat> and instead of using one of his multiplied many, he took that one ewe lamb from that guy and slew it and fed his guest. <clears throat> and David gets mad, and he said to Nathan, he said, as the Lord liveth and as I so liveth, that man shall surely die. And Nathan looks at him and says, you be the man. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh oh <laughs> See, God didn't wink at it God didn't call it a love story God, did, God rebuked it and rebuked him and said you had all these well, you could have multiple wives and you went and took from that woman then committed conspiracy to commit murder and had him murdered Man was so honorable. He came, wouldn't go sleep with his wife because his fellow countrymen were out fighting. So David got him drunk and tried to send him home to his wife drunk. He still wouldn't go in unto her. Yeah, he went and committed, here you go, he went and committed adultery with somebody, got her pregnant, and, uh, and she's married to Mr. Boy Scout. Are you here? He refuses to go into his wife because it would be unhonorable for him to do that while his battle countrymen are out there fighting in battle. He wouldn't dishonor them. So David 
writes his letter, his death sentence, seals it, and puts it in his hand and says, take it and give it to the, to the, to the head guy. But you see, God doesn't miss all that. He don't miss a lick. So after David thinks it's all cool, it's all got away with it, the prophet shows up. Now he's like, hey, listen, here's what happens when you get carnal. You don't think spiritual people exist. I mean, he probably wouldn't have had Nathan come in if he thought I had a clue that he was coming with a word from the Lord. Hello? Because he got carnal. He's done all this, committed, you know, committed uh, conspiracy, I mean, adultery, conspiracy, murder. He's gotten away with it because he's king. Except there's a higher authority than the government. I said there's a higher authority than the government. Amen. And I'm telling you, all these people in America's government think they're getting away with stuff. There is a higher authority. And you may think you've gotten away with it, and you may think you're pulling off, pulling the fast one. Honey, let me tell you something. God has kept very good records. And there will be a tallying of the score. Whether in this life or the next, there will be a tally. Lest you repent of your wickedness. All right? Well, we're, we just keep running down that road. Men need Jesus. And we, here's the problem. The church, just like with, with, with Grant, has acquiesced to the world's narrative. We no longer, we, we're, we're finding it harder and harder to have voices that are being proclaimed out of fear of being rejected by men. But you're going to have to get bold and you're going to have to be full of joy and full of the Holy Ghost and not give a rip about what men think. And obey God. I say, and obey God. Our responsibility is to God, not to some narrative woke perspective, a bunch of, you know, heathenistic, demonized, you know, people coming to tell you, you can't say that. It's hate speech. It's not hate speech. You're the one full of hate speech. You will kill me if I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. I'm not going to kill you. Hello. I'm going to share truth with you in hopes that you change. But those people will kill you. Or, or make sure they absolutely destroy you in any and every way possible. Because they're full of the devil. Well, that's okay. I'm full of God. And my God's bigger than your devil. Way bigger. Hello. He will vindicate me. He will sustain me. He'll uphold me by the right hand of his righteousness. Glory to God. I can decree and declare the truth. Praise God. And the Holy Ghost will be my re reward. Praise God. And the angels of heaven have been given charge over me. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. So you can bring your vitriol. You can bring your hate. You can bring all that. That's okay. We're just going to preach Jesus to you and still tell you you're wrong. And that there's a way out. I never forget uh, uh, Norval Hayes one time. He had preached a service, and um, uh, you, you, you think, see, the, the heart of man wants to be free. Now, demons control people, and they, you know, they, get, they get so used to being led around by them, a lot of times they, they won't do anything about it. <clears throat> but Norval was somewhere, and this girl, he was eating, and this girl came. And she had another girl with her, but the one girl came down to him <coughs> and just came to the table where he was sitting and eating and got down on knees and said, Brother Noble, Brother Noble, Brother Noble, I, I, I'm a lesbian and I want to be free. And he, 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 said, he said, okay. And he cast the devil out of her, got her born again. Hallelujah. And looked back and said, now, you, now you're a lesbian lover about that. can be free too if, you want, if she wants to come down here and get the same thing. And that girl heard that and turned around and ran the other way. She didn't want to be free. This girl wanted to be free. Amen. See, her heart knew it was wrong. I said her heart knew it was wrong. 
Right now, it's fashionable in Hollywood to be a lesbian, more so than being a gay. It's, it's fashionable. It's the new thing. Why? Because Hollywood's messed up. They messed up. I mean, look, look at the movies. They can't hardly get uh, Jesus stuff right. They usually don't. You know? Y'all have all seen the classic NBC movie, uh, Jesus, where the, the shadow of the hand is going to the head and the angel music in the background. Ooh, I, ooh, I. You know, it's, it is so spooky. Jesus wasn't spooky. The only time they got spooked is when they cast the legion out. They came and asked him to depart from their coast. Get away. Get, and we, we ain't never seen that. Now, we've seen him cut himself. We've seen him break fetters. We've seen him run around. No man can tame him. And he just lives in the caves. And all of a sudden, now all the pigs are dead. Pigs didn't even want the devils. <laughs> Brother Hagan always called, uh, he said that the, the um, a homosexual spirit's an unclean spirit. It's unclean. That's what the Bible calls an unclean spirit. And Paul wrote and said that it, they work that which is unseemly. Okay? And um, the pigs didn't even want them. <laughs> they just went, they'd rather drown themselves than have that thing in them. A waste of some pretty good barbecue right there. A whole lot of Easter style just went and drowned itself. <laughs> Hallelujah. People are hurting. The world's telling them that religious people are full of hate and want to inhibit them from living their life the way they want to live. They're not living the life the way they want, the way they want to live. They're living life the way the demons are driving them. When a man yields to that and all of a sudden he starts twisting around and talking with the lisp and acting like a girl that's not normal it's demonic when a girl starts you know cutting her hair off and you know acting i mean trying to act like a man all the time that's not normal it's demons when you don't know what you are that's demons okay that now they're saying there's no such thing as you know Biology is messed up. You got cis biology. It's you know because our teaching on biology is white. It's, they call it white. They make it racist. How can teaching that a man is a man and a woman is a woman be racist? Hello, I'd be offended. Does that mean only white folks know the difference? No, that just means people are messed up. But they use the racist thing as a leverage. To automatically get a certain group of people to jump in and say, yeah, because they're so, they're so racist themselves that if you label it, the other, label it white, they hate it. So being normal is hated because it's white. That's, that's just the devil. He's playing people like a fiddle. And the devil went down to Georgia. We're just going to bring Charlie Daniels in and let him whip him. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. We no longer can sit by idly by and just be nominal Christians and hide. We have to let the joy of being born again, full of the life of God, full of Jesus, get out of us and give people answers who are miserable, even if they don't know it. Amen. Even if they don't know it. I saw a thing today, um, an article on Fox, where there is a detransitioning guy. He became a girl, and now he's detransitioning back to a guy and coming out and started a, a, an advocacy group to oppose the transition crowd because they're saying, and, and this woman before Congress who's in charge of all these pro-transition groups saying, because Congressman Asker said uh, something about detransitioning, she said that's not a real thing. It's not real. Why is it not real? Now, now wait a second. You're the tolerant group. What's wrong? Why, why can't somebody detransition and be supported by you? Because they're just trying to be their true self. Because 
I think they said the block, the hormone blocking drugs are about eighteen thousand dollars a month. So who do you think what's behind this? Money. The surgeries are super expensive. Who's behind all this? The farm, big farm and doctors. Because there's millions, billions of dollars in this whole thing. Psychological services, medical services, pharmaceuticals. Now you do know pharmacy comes out of comes out of ancient witchcraft. Now, I'm not against all drugs. Okay? I understand that. I mean, there are, there are good drugs, and there are things that are, that are helpful, antibiotics and that kind of thing. Um, but there's still a spirit out there. There's still a spirit out there. And we're getting people who are in positions of authority doing things to our children. We have got to get to people. We have got to get to them with answers. They're turning on Facebook, and they're being told, um, they got teachers who've infiltrated our schools who are telling kids, don't tell your parents, but you're a girl and not a boy. Don't tell your parents. They won't understand. And they help them get counseling. In Oregon, you could go at 15 years old and have a change operation and don't have to tell your parents. Your parents do not have to be notified. It's 15. Now, don't you know I'd be shooting somebody? Well, Pastor, that's a threat. Uh-huh. You come in and take my, and I don't have 15 year olds, so I, I have no, no basis on this. But you're going to take my child and you're going to deliberately mess them up forever? Hello? Yeah, as a parent, I'd be furious. Well, you don't know what's best. What we do, we're, we're the medical field. No, you're living out your perverse fantasies and using it on people. You're, you're German experimentalist doing your experimentations, experimentations on society. And these kids are messed up. And we have got to reach people with truth. We've got to get to the young people. We've got to get to their parents who support it. Hello? I mean, you know, it's fashionable now for your kids to have every allergy on the planet. Parents go get their kids' allergy test. And they're allergic, I mean, and they're allergic to everything. They can't eat peanut butter. They can't eat this. They can't eat that. They can't touch this. They can't smell that. They can't be in contact with this. They got this. They got that. They got this. They got that. What? Is, I grew up, and you rarely found somebody, rarely, that had that kind of allergy. Yeah, you, you got, I mean, we got sheets in the school system. You know, everybody's got, they're allergic to this, they're allergic to that. They got this, they got that. They can't, they can't smell this. They can't do that. They can't touch this. They can't. Kids want something. You got, you got something. Are you allergic to peanut butter? Are you sure? Because you know, they want something to eat. You might have, you know, peanut butter nabs or whatever. <coughs> Are you allergic to peanut butter? No. Because if you don't and they have a reaction, you're toast. Things are fashionable. The devil is offering this to rob them of joy, of the opportunity to experience joy. And the church is just hiding behind the wall of fear that somebody is going to call them a name. You're homophobic. You're transphobic. Are you ready for this one? It's going to be happening. Pedophobic. It's coming. It won't be that term. It'll be a different term. They'll come up with another term. But they'll come up with another term. Because they're no longer pedophiles. They're minor attracted adults. That is the psychological. That is the new term they're using. Minor attracted adults. Why? Does that sound as bad as pedophilia? You have to think about it more. You hear pedophile, and you're like ready to, ready to string them up. Mess with children. You, you messed up pervert. But minor attracted adults sounds like a condition. And who, who are we to argue with that, that, they, that they're attracted to children? Me and a two-by-four? Hello? Oh, you're full of hate. No, but I'm more concerned about the welfare of that child than I am what you think you can do with that child. You can mess that child up for the rest of their life. They're going to need help that only Jesus can fix if you get a hold of them. 
Hello. And they get, I mean, they become so messed up because the very trusted people in their life took advantage of them. There's a messed up world out there, folks. We're at Christmas. We have to be joy and light to the world. We have to share Jesus with people. We have to get, we have to look through all the, the walls they put up and the smoke screens they put up and let them see the true light of a good God who will deliver them from their iniquities and from their bondages and bring them into the light as he is in the light. Amen? Amen. All right. So Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Bona Natale. Amen. Glory to God. And Joya Noel. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I don't know how to say it in German. I should get, I should, I guess I should have learned it in German. This it would probably sound like <laughs> <laughs> Boy like a night gun. Boy like a light night. Yeah, like Nike, 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 Nike. Okay, hold on. Dick's trying. You know, that, that's, a, that's a challenge with me. Okay? Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I, if I can hear it and see it, um, it helps me. Okay. Oh, it's locked up. Come on now. You got to be kidding me. I, I had I had my translator open and it locked up. Okay. <laughs> Say it one more time. Froilico. Froilica Nylocton. Bylocton. 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 Froilico. Bylocton. Boy, Lika, my lucky. Yeah, well. So go out there and get in your Volkswagen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We love you. We appreciate you. We really want you to <clears throat> share Jesus and recognize people are messed up. Demons are controlling their thoughts. Their hearts are empty. And the only answer is God through Jesus Christ. Lying to them is not going to help them. Telling them that God thinks it's okay is not going to help them. All you're doing is condemning them to their destruction. You have to care more about the eternity than you do the moment. I would rather be wrong and go into eternity where there is nothing. Hello? Oh, actually, I'd rather be, I'd rather you be right and go into eternity with Jesus than to be wrong and to go into eternity thinking there is none and, be, and find out you were, right and you were wrong. Because your eternity is, is established at that point. We have to be the moment in someone's life that they can see the light and see the joy of being born again and see the joy of knowing Jesus to shine into their heart. And in that moment, trust God to touch them so that they can come out of their, their bondage and be, and be translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. We love you. God bless you. Merry Christmas. We'll see you on New Year's Day here at the Expedition Church. Until then, spend time with your family. Be the light of the world. Share the joy of God. Living in a, a, a crooked and perverse world, you are salt and you are light. Carry that truth. Be bold. Be full of love, but be bold. Do not accept the world telling you to shut up. Be louder. Be stronger, because that one moment may be the only chance they get to hear the truth and turn from darkness to light. 
Remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. Merry Christmas. We love you. Barnlika. Okay, Freya, Van Lanken. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> I enjoy that. You know, uh, goodbye, goodbye, everybody. Um, when we.